Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Crisis Point podcast. My name's Ryan. Today, I'm here with my co-host, Shane. Hello. And our returning guest, Ben. Hello. All right. So uh, today, uh, Shane, you had this idea of kind of kicking off our episodes with talking about uh, the games we've played and, you know, the other hobby stuff that we've done on the side. So do you want to... You want to get started with that? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, like, just trying to figure out like what we're, like, what we're up to, you know, in the in the MCP in the world of MCP. Yeah. So obviously, uh, you've been kind of actually. Now that I think about this, maybe you're not the person to start with. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> it's been a roller coaster. Okay. But, <laughs> I mean, we. But Ben, what have you been doing? What What have you? Yeah. Been doing? Um, I've, I've had a couple of ventures. Uh, my wife, Alyssa, and I just ventured to Oneata, New York, uh, yes, yesterday, to be on the stream of the Professional Casual Network, uh, where we played uh, the Organized Play Kit Separation Anxiety, uh, which is the one with the symbiotes. Um, that was super, super cool. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, doing that. Alyssa ended up winning. Uh, she brought, uh, we changed the rules. Normally you're supposed to have uh, 11 points, but I invited them to say, what if, what if we do 14 points so I can take all of my slobs? Uh, <laughs> and, and so, uh, so we did a 14 point uh, play and Alyssa brought Dormammu in She-Hulk and oh proceeded to murder everyone. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, Dormammu, on one turn, uh, at, at the go figure, it was the last turn, had the Carnage symbiote uh, and had just played Smash. So he was doing an 11 dice, uh, the obliteration attack, his big spender attack, for 11 dice that can bounce endlessly <laughs> as <laughs> long as the models aren't removed and you get, and you get the, the correct uh, die configuration. Uh, so she, on one action, uh, had four attacks, and the Carnage symbiote gives you a, once you daze or KO a character, once per, <laughs> once per round, you can paint the town red and get another free attack. Um, <laughs> so with one action, one action, she had five attacks. Oh my goodness. So what, uh, how many attacks did she get on her second? Any? Or was everybody dead? Uh, she got one more. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. in one in one round, uh, Dormammu had six attacks, and uh, surprisingly, there was no one left on that side of the board. Uh, yeah, so that I was that'll do it. That'll that in fact will do it. Um, <laughs> so, but it was great. Um, uh, I've also been preparing a couple of games ready for a, a potential tournament in Rochester, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, which we're really excited about. Um, and uh, Shane and I, you, you and I just uh, just played a, a nice, fun, rousing game, um, <laughs> which we figured we cracked the code, guys. We cracked the code of how to beat Malekith. Yeah. We we figured it out. Are you ready, Ryan? I, I, I want you to, you know, myself and I'm sure lots of our listeners and viewers are waiting with bated breath. You ready? This yeah. is great. Ready? <laughs> roll, roll good. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. I don't That's know it. why I didn't think of that earlier. Yeah, yeah. Just roll good. Hope that Malekith rolls poorly. Problem solved. Look at that. Yeah, Crack you did kind of leave out the other part. You can't just roll good. You need Malekith. <laughs> Malekith also needs... It is a two-step program. That is true. That is true. <laughs> it, is, uh, it, it is imperative that you just follow those two steps. Two steps. And, uh, you know, Problem you, can be, you, can be Mal- you can be any character with that strategy, actually, but especially Malekith. Yeah. Well, you know, Magneto is invincible. We've... You know, uh, as we've determined. As we've determined. Uh, so I kind of have a, a, a somewhat serious question coming mm-hmm. off of that. Yeah. So uh, you said you need Malekith to roll bad and you need to roll good. Do you guys think that re- uh, recalibration matrix is like an auto pick in a Malekith matchup, do you think? If, if you have it. If it's on yeah. your roster, I think you got it, right? I, yeah. Uh, I really, it was hard for me. So, and as Shane and I were playing our, our game today, you know, one of the struggles about playing brotherhood is um, we have so many essential cards in my opinion that you just, you have to take, for example, I don't know a world in which I take juggernaut and not 
do you know who I am? Or mystique and deception or Or magnetic refraction and then follow me. And then I guess you have one left. Yeah, I've got one left. Um, That can be, yeah, maybe. I don't know. What is the other card usually? uh, Asteroid M is. Oh yeah. Never mind. (laughs) Yeah. Asteroid M, which is pretty, you know, uh, one of the things that people are really figuring out um, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, kick myself for this i'm gonna give some anti-brotherhood tech right now uh great way to beat brotherhood is just throw people away because you can only especially magneto because you can only asteroid him once (laughs) so yeah um yeah it's it's really um and you need that card if you don't bring it then you know people get a a gleeful smile um especially with what people are taking to beat malekith in terms of like the sam avengers um it also really hurts brotherhood so um, yeah. Uh, and then the last thing that I, at least for me that, that I've done, um, is I just picked up the Hydra, uh, release stuff. Nice. Uh, and been starting putting them together. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited about, um, uh, Hydra is going to be bonkers guys. Uh, they look so, the models are so good. Can I just, I was talking to you about this, right? Uh, Ben, I think Arnim Zola is just so big. Like I was yeah. looking at the pictures of him and the the AMG posted on their Twitter with like it was him and and Strucker and then like Human Torch and somebody else all in one picture. Um, in it like before I saw that picture, I didn't realize how ju- he's so tall. He's Arnim Zola boy. is he mm-hmm. even? I actually don't remember. Is is Arnim Zola size three? Where is he uh, size two? I don't know. Actually, let's let's. Take I'm gonna it. find this out right now. I got it pulled up. He uh, is two. he is size three. So, like, at least that makes sense. Um, he's so much bigger <laughs> than you'd think. Like, you see him next to another character, and it's like, oh, my God, he's a big robot. Hydra looks awesome. I'm excited for yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's me. That's That's been, been me the last couple, couple of days. Right. What have you been doing? So I, unfortunately, have not gotten any games in since our last recording, but I have gotten a lot done on the... On the uh, I almost said the army painter, the army painting, I guess, if we want to get technical about it, side of things. On Saturday night and Sunday night, I think I painted up uh, Venom Hood, Demon Hood, um, and uh, Voodoo. The, the real question, Ryan, is, is have you painted Malekith yet? Oh, yeah, no, like... no. Because so the thing that I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm painting up. Um, I had just built and like primed like basically my entire collection except for um Hulk and Malekith just white because what I'm doing is I'm just going through and I'm using the the army painter uh like mega speed paint set and I'm just using that like almost exclusively except I'm using like some like citadel base and layer paints to like you know in case there's any sort of like overrun or uh, any sort of accidental spillage like touching them up with using that um but, but using the the speed paints, like I'm able to get through like multiple models a night. Whereas if I were to be doing it just like the traditional way of miniature painting, it would be taking me days to get like a single mini done to like a satisfactory standard. That's just me. I don't know. But um, having an airbrush for helping to prime everything also works really well especially living in upstate new york with the way the atmospherics up here react with uh spray can primers is not always the best so a lot lot of stuff done on the hobby front i'm basically done with all the models i plan on running at that tournament but i think malekith might show up unpainted or at least partially finished because i don't want to use the speed paints on them that's fair. He is very big. There's a lot of big uh, surface areas, especially like the wings and stuff on him, and the Hulk too, where I don't want any accidental like pooling to happen, and then I'm just going to have to go back and like either dry brush it up or something, so it's like, screw it, I might as well take my time with these beautiful models and make them look the way I want them to look and not be all like yeah. blotchy looking. I used black on uh, on Venom, and he turned out pretty okay. With the army painter speed paint, so yeah, I, that I was cool. contrast. I did contrast on my venom um, mm-hmm. with the black templar, and I wished I did it traditional because I did have to put a lot of coats on to get it mm-hmm. to not look like splotchy or anything. Because he is a very like flat surface model. There's not a yeah. lot of 
Yeah. But my, my Craven, on the other hand, with contrast, it was like, yeah, he looked cool. great. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so easy and it looks so good. Yeah. I mean, you got, when we were hanging out that one night, you got a goblin down, like you finished him in like an hour. It felt like not yeah, even, was... but yeah, that's all I'm doing on the hobbies side. Um, so I guess me, I, uh, have been, so I got eliminated spoiler alert. We're going to talk about it later, but I got eliminated from season eight and the top eight uh, with my spider foes. So I've kind of been doing a lot of, um, you know, theory crafting list building with other things than spider foes, because I've just been honed in on foes for so long now, uh, that it's kind of nice to, to look at other stuff and, and play other stuff and. This is kind of like the early stages where I try to figure out what I want to play for next season. And there's a lot of time for that. But um, I've, I've got to experiment. So I've been messing around with a, uh, a list I made on TTS that is like a Wakanda Avengers uh, dual affiliation oh. list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'm stealing a little bit of your old tech, Ben. I'm going to be honest with the, the Hulk <laughs> in Wakanda right. and, and just being like the tankiest Hulk ever. Um, with lots of rerolls and, and kind of mitigating that the power that you, that you're using, you're not always needing to spend four power on Hulk, not Penny Banner, because you have these these Wakanda rerolls that kind of build up, and he always has power for them. Yeah, um, and it's just nice to have such a big, beefy control piece that can just that has great. He's he's just Hulk's got it all, man. He's got excellent mobility. Mm-hmm. He hits like a truck. Mm-hmm. He has multiple throws in his kit that are like medium. He's got a medium throw and then a short throw and they're both size four. Yeah. Um, he, he's just a beast. Uh, and, and I've really been enjoying him in, in Wakanda. And then the other half of the roster is, uh, Sam Avengers with, with some, some anti, anti Malekith ideas kind of, kind of in there. Um, so I, I wanted to do something that, that I wanted to play something that felt a little more meta because I haven't been doing that at all. And, uh, but kind of, you know, throw in a little, I don't want it to just be Avengers, Sam Avengers. Um, so having the option to, to go Wakanda, if anything, I feel like I would want to default to Wakanda and only pull out Sam Avengers and like the, the perilous times (laughs) (laughs) playing against Malekith. But, um, no, I mean, it was fine. I mean, well, I had my league game, my final league game against Lucas Sheik, who we interviewed last week. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that later, but um, no, it's just been you know. And I've also been in theory crafting with foes a little bit more because I can't help myself. Of course, you're 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 the Goblin King. We um, we, <laughs> we we know this about you. And mm-hmm. uh, now now the question is, I, I I think I asked you this, but I don't remember. Um, did you put Killmonger in that list? No Killmonger. No. Oh, you break. Well, wait, wait. I'm sorry. In in the Wakanda list. Yeah, and you're Wakanda. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I thought oh, okay. I thought you were asking about my foes. I was like, no. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. I thought so, no, too. Yeah. I'm like, what? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no. I, no, I, yeah. I, Killmonger's I in there. Okay, good. Yeah. I actually got uh, to play a game with, with Killmonger in the list, so. Good. Uh, I think, I think I don't know if I did it to you, but there's there's some really fun and sneaky Usurp the Throne plays with Wakanda Forever. It's hilarious. Uh, oh, for yeah. the person For the person doing it, not for the person receiving it. But, no, uh, no, no, certainly not. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, and yeah, it's I, I, Wakanda's fun. They're just they're very like they have so much control, especially when you have Hulk on the list. I mean, not that I mean, Killmonger does not have so much control, but he has a lot right. of killing. But um, yeah, I mean, just between Black Panther and uh, and Hulk, I mean, th- those two pieces alone on a list offer so much, so much control threat. And and on top of it, the list hits like a truck, and it's a lot of fun. I, I'm enjoying it right now, and and we'll see, we'll see where I where I land for for affiliation wise later down the line, and like a couple months from now. But um, yeah, it's been fun playing something other than foes, you know. Well, who knew that a uh, range five pushing eighty seven percent of characters in the game is really good? Yeah. So just guaranteed push from Shuri. Boop. Pretty good. I, the one game I played, I didn't actually get to play Shuri because I. I I, th- I don't remember what the, what was it. It was six, ten, fourteen. It was sixteen. So I had Killmonger and Panther, and Hulk, which was fourteen. Yeah, and then so I, I threw in Okoye, and Okoye ended up winning me that game. So you know, she's really good, especially in, in Wakanda. Yeah, just I I I love Wakanda. Like I said, I mean, I that was my second half uh, roster for 
uh, for the TTS league and, uh, yeah, and then you, you know, I mean, they are not very good against Malekith, but, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> but they're very, very good and they're super fun to play with. So, yeah, I mean, uh, once upon a time, I mean, black, or I almost said black Panther, but in general, Wakanda was like the big bad. <laughs> my my yeah, buddy Sooner, yeah, my buddy Sooner won uh, his one win with uh, with the TTS League is was with uh, Wakanda, if I remember correctly, and he's made several runs uh, with Wakanda before people really gave them the respect. Uh, Wakanda on on Gamma before Malekith showed yep. up was you were you were gonna lose. Uh, yeah, all the pushes and all, all the pushes, the Wakanda wave or whatever they call it. Yes, um, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, but yeah, uh, that's what I've been up to. So, uh, I guess before we kind of continue here, I do want to take this opportunity before we get too deep into the episode to talk about some things uh, that we've got coming up. Um, I am currently running a an actual uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol League at uh, Millennium Games in Rochester. We just kicked that off tonight, so this is uh, Tuesday the thirteenth. Uh, and this is going to be running for six weeks. Uh, the way it works is uh, we're going to score up, you know, the the win-loss over the course of the six weeks. Every player is going to drop, you know, their worst performance, essentially. So if you're in the Rochester area or Western New York or somewhere around there and you want to come and get some Marvel Crisis Protocol games, that's a great way to do it. And then uh, this weekend, uh, Shane, you are going to be hosting a... Marvel Crisis Protocol tournament on the seventeenth, and that is at Just Games, also in Rochester. Um, so, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's going to be a uh, I'm going to be TOing a Marvel Crisis Protocol tournament for the first time, which is exciting. I've TOed you know for plenty of other games before, mm-hmm. uh, mostly Kill Team, uh, but uh, yeah, we're we're having a uh, a Crisis Protocol tournament here at Just Games on uh, Saturday, the seventeenth of September. So. When this comes out, it'll be like a few days away. But um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, I think already we've got like uh, like I, 11 uh, players. I yeah, think we've got nine slots left. Yeah, Jason just signed up. Yeah, yeah. so I'm hoping we can hit that 20 mark. Um, that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, get to sit back and, and watch some Crisis Pro. I'll be, I'll be watching with envious green rage. <laughs> because I'm not playing it. <laughs> you've, but, uh, you've played a lot recently, though. Yeah, I know. I'm almost a little like I feel like I'm trying to burn <laughs> myself out. But it's uh, it'll be cool. So if you're if you're in New York and you got nothing going on this weekend, you know, make the trip because because there's there's tickets left and you get to meet us. And what it, what isn't that a dream come true, isn't it? I would imagine so. <laughs> I've met us. I've met us, and it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it, it is pretty great. It uh, is pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, and uh, yeah. How All did right, uh, cool. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan? How did your league opener start today? I mean, how, it was great. Open? So we had, I think, so far we've had nine or ten people sign up tonight. We had, which was like our kickoff night. We had, um, we had six. Six or eight players in the store playing simultaneously. Hey, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. pretty good. I don't know when we want to do this, Shane, but I've had this big wheel in front oh, of me. The big wheel for the past you know how long, the however wheel. long we've been recording for the past twenty minutes. This big wheel has just been spinning in front of me, and I really want to just let it rip right now, Shane. <laughs> well, but we got to be clear because we don't want to excite people and make make them think that the famous. Spider-Man villain Big Wheel has been. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> Not the, the all-time great. That should be the next foes leader, by the way. Big Wheel. Big Can we wheel. get a for that? <laughs> wasn't there happen. wasn't there a leak for like a tank or a vehicle or something for Hydra affiliation? It's an OP kit. It's a terrain feature oh, and an OP okay. kit. Okay. It's, oh, I see. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. I know what you're talking about, but anyway. Did, yeah. Elaborate on the big wheel, Ryan, because we're all so curious. So, guys, if you listen to our last episode of the Crisis Point podcast, you know that we have a new segment on the show here called Splash Mountain. Oh, I love that sound. That was the pause for the splash. Yeah, I took my time editing that splash, yeah. Uh, so, Splash Mountain, what we do here is I've got a big wheel, 
And on this big wheel is almost every single character in Marvel Crisis Protocol, uh, excluding Ursa Major, who we did last week, and the upcoming uh, the upcoming Sentinels, because we're going to be talking them about them later on in this episode. So concept is, I'm going to spin this wheel. It's going to land on one of these guys, and then we need to kind of fire from the hip, uh, talk about what affiliation we would splash that character in, okay? Are you guys ready? I, I was born ready. All right, Splash Mountain incoming. I'm so excited. Oh my god! It's Lockjaw. Yes, lockjaw. it's Lockjaw. <laughs> oh, the goodest boy, Lockjaw. My, my, my baby boy, Lockjaw. I don't know anything about this character. <laughs> oh, I, I love luck. He is the goodest boy. He is the good boy of Marvel Crisis Protocol. Yes. Uh, and I've actually played Lockjaw a few times because those games where we messed around with humans, Ben, I, I've, I've had my share of Lockjaw games. I've never splashed him before, though. Oh, uh, I, well, I've splashed him uh, a many do you times. Wanna, do you want to start then? Sounds like you have experience. Oh, yeah. Let, let me tell you. Um, so Lockjaw was one of the key components to in my opinion the best affiliation oh Bro- brotherhood uh, oh your fave uh, do do you know do you know who loves free movement uh, uh, arrange free movement the best character of mcp magneto uh, insert Magneto was right clip here. Uh, you know, ooze, <laughs> ooze, and ahs. Why you uh, me? I'm right. Lockjaw, in all seriousness, Lockjaw is amazing in Brotherhood. Uh, you know, one of the things that Lockjaw struggles with is he has three superpowers at three, three, two, and he doesn't have a great attack. Um, what's amazing is if you take Lockjaw, who's a three cost character, um, and pretty survivable, he's got six health. Um, and he's got ways to generate, you know, his own powers. He's got rerolls, uh, but he does need some extra, uh, some extra love in the power generation department. Brotherhood loves that. Um, he has a throw. He has a terrain throw called Drop It, uh, which again uh, is just feeding into the Brotherhood theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, that when you throw, uh, when you throw terrain features, you gain power equal to the size of the terrain feature spread out. Um, uh, from your characters, which is just uh, amazing. Um, Magneto and some of the other slow, you know, Scarlet Witch uh, love being teleported. You know, we, uh, Brotherhood love the affiliate, uh, the um, attrition play style. So you don't want to waste actions moving. Who who moves when you can slap, right? I mean, move or slap. We choose slap all day, right? Uh, and so Lockjaw not <laughs> only not only gets you there. But when he gets you there, he also has this amazing super ability, uh, uh, superpower called Bloodhound, interdimensional Bloodhound, which gives you an additional die. You know who loves additional dice and slapping people? Magneto. Is it, Ma- so is go- it Magneto? <laughs> it, it's it's going to be Magneto. He goes from a six dice re-rolling attack when you're within range two to now seven dice re-rolling all your, all your misses. Come on. Who, he is... He is the honorable best boy mutant dog in the world. Lockjaw, Team Brotherhood, all day, every day. And he, and, and, you know, and I don't know if you mentioned this, uh, but he he can even throw terrain himself. You know, I mean, yeah, just, yeah. On top of it all, uh, no, that's a good one. And and I do, but that used to be kind of more common. Yes, what, didn't it? Um, yep. Oh, uh, it was it was the one of the ways to to run Brotherhood. And, and some people still do it. You know, um, we, the, there are two other three cost characters that try to do the same thing that Lockjaw does in Heimdall and Darkstar. Um, the, mm-hmm. they, it's just usually not enough. Um, Lockjaw, in my opinion, out of those three characters uh, in Brotherhood is probably still the best. So, um, I like it. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of it. So while while you were doing yours, I had time to come up with a with a unique one that I don't think anybody has maybe thought of, and that is Black Order, but not any Black Order. I was not Thanos think, Black yeah. Order, but the Corvus Glaive leadership Black mm. Order. Because <laughs> here's the thing about Corvus Glaive: uh, much like Magneto, the only area really where he struggles is in his mobility. 
Mm -hmm. uh, he, he really kind of gets in your face through Mothership, a.k.a. the same thing as Asteroid M, the same thing that Magneto is dealing with. But once Corvus Glaive is in your face, he is swinging and banging, mm -hmm. and he is wiping out everything in his path. Now, the, the Corvus Glaive leadership only applies to Brotherhood characters, which means that if you're playing the Corvus Glaive uh, led Black Order, you're not you're only going to have room for like one splash, really, if any. Yeah. And the rest of your your heavy hitters are going to be, you know, your 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 Corvus Glaive with Reality Gem. Maybe maybe you're feeling spicy and taking Power Stone Black Swan or Ebony Maw with a Space Gem. Uh, so your your whatever splash you have, if any, is is going to have to be a character that can get a lot of power on its own. That, that's kind of filling a gap that the team has. So the teleport is, like I said, it's it's helping make up for that lack of mobility on the part of uh, Corvus Glaive, who who's simply necessary. Uh, do, him doing well is pretty imperative to that team doing well. Uh, he can help their attrition game by uh, by giving everybody an extra die against somebody, which is great. Um, and he and this kind of ties into the fact that he doesn't get the the leadership basically that Corvus Glaive has. But it's okay because as long as he's being a good boy and he's hanging out near his his Black Order buddies, he gets a bunch of power anyway. And he's totally okay with not getting that extra power. He's just making sure the the rest of his killers are are hopping in and getting in the fight. And uh, yeah, for that reason, I like Lockjaw with Corvus Glaive uh, leadership. I believe it's called the First of the Black Order. And uh, yeah, I hope I sold you on that. I love it. I'm all I'm all for slaps. Just, I mean, <laughs> just, just, just slap town central. He's not very good at slapping himself. So he needs to surround himself with good slappers. So Ryan, you got anything? yeah, I'm going to take the final plunge here on splash mountain. Oh, this is great. All right. Great. So yeah, I'm going to splash him into, into a Malekith led cabal. How do you like that? Oh. <laughs> am I, am I, I thought about that one. Am I disgusting for this? Yeah, I mean, like, Lockjaw, with his teleport ability and everything, he gives the rest of the team outside of Malekith, because Malekith's movement is already so good, uh, you know, just more ways to get around the board. And there's probably mm -hmm. something to be said for, for the, the leadership allowing Lockjaw to move closer to his friends for mm -hmm. who's a good boy, so mm -hmm. when he does activate, he's getting that power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it gives him a power. It gives him a power. Yeah, yep. yeah. So he he really he'll, it's like you're giving him four power up for who's a good boy. <laughs> that is real good. I love it. I love it. I mean, and I, then Malekith is just thing. great. I mean, obviously. Uh, see, boo. Now insert boots. Why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> I don't know if I can use that Hannibal Burris clip without getting <laughs> the video demonetized. So we'll we'll see how that goes. I guess. Yeah. But that concludes Splash Mountain Part 2. We we are going to get through these characters one at a time. Um, and we may never finish because I think they're actually releasing characters faster than we are doing Splash Mountain segments. So uh, Because <laughs> right. we just had a bunch come out. Yeah. Yeah, we, we just had, what, two? Six more characters? Six, yeah, six. Yeah, that sounds right. I think, I think that's right, yeah. Oh, well, Howling Commandos are in one box, so maybe it's five. I don't know. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, well, there's three of them, so. That's true, so really it's like <laughs> seven, eight characters. <laughs> gotta talk about <laughs> Dum Dum Dugan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that other guy that nobody remembers. <laughs> yeah, the, the other. It's like Gabriel <laughs> Myers. I'm, just, I'm guessing right now. I don't even right know. I, got, I gotta look, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. It's, uh, I got it pulled up. His name is Gabriel Jones. I was close, I got the Gabriel, Gabriel Jones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, never heard of him. Sounds like a fake guy. Yeah, I know Dumb Dumb Dugan, though. <laughs> yeah, Dumb Dumb. Everybody knows Dumb Dumb. Everyone knows Dumb Dumb. Speaking of the new characters coming out faster than we can do Splash Mountain segments for them, uh, the Sentinels, their rules have been released. So I guess we can take a look at those now if you guys want. Yeah, I am so excited for this team. I don't know if I'm going to get them or anything, but what? they're just so cool. I don't... like. <laughs> what? What do you mean? I... Look, I am hot buying six of these bad boys. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, you're playing Brotherhood, so it makes sense. I, I, I just love, I love them so much. Well, one, I love them because I need to destroy them because they hate mutants and hashtag mutant proud. But, uh, what? How can you, Shane? 
tell me right now, how can you not love slapping down at 14 points, three size five models? <laughs> It's just so obnoxious because they're all yeah. so, so huge. Well, technically, the three of them are only 13 threat, which is actually just killer. That's brutal, right? I can't. I, you know, Look, uh, our listeners know I, I can't do math. It's I only, <laughs> I can't, math is hard. Um, but if you're playing at 14, you know what you can do? You can swap out one of those little sentinels for the one and only Cassandra Nova. Because she is going to be in this affiliation. It's probably just going to be the three characters. But um, let's talk about the data card. Uh, I'll go over Sentinel Mark IV really quick, and then we'll go over Sentinel Prime. And because I'm I'm more excited for Sentinel Prime, but uh, the 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 base four threat Sentinel Mark IV. So he's uh, defensive stats three four four. Um, he is a seven wound seven seven health character. Um, size five. Sheesh. Uh moving oh, short. Uh he's got a um uh they have plasma blast as their builder. So it's a range three four dice attack, which uh on the surface is kind of underwhelming. But you can uh spend up to three additional power and you add a die for each attack. Um or for you add a die for each power spent this way. So uh you can spend one power, get a five dice attack, which Still kind of feels lame. You spend two power, get a six dice attack. Spend three power, get a seven dice attack. I don't know why you do that because you have a three power. Spend. I mean, I guess I know why you do that because you might want to regenerate some of that power. But his spender is uh, is three power as well, and range three, um, which is suppression protocols. It's an eight dice attack. Uh, the only special thing about it is on a wild trigger that gets the suppression rule which means that for each uh, wild in the attack roll and the defending character gains one of the following special conditions, incinerate, shock, or slow. All those are great, especially incinerate and shock. And what's nice about this is it's for each wild. Mm -hmm. It's not like if you get a wild, you can do one mm -hmm. of these. So if you get multiple wilds, you're, you're giving them incinerate and shock most of the time. If, if um, I can interject, and we know because there's a wild trigger on this attack, you will never roll a wild. With this attack, I oh no, I never get my wild trigger. You'll, you'll, you'll never. Okay, sorry. Just we got we got to make that. It's true. It is yeah. eight, <laughs> on eight dice. Oh, I yeah. always oh, get my wild triggers, but I'm bad. I've, I've, so I've seen it happen. It's hilarious. Um, it's uncanny how few wild triggers <laughs> I get. It's one of the reasons I'm stopping playing Ronin because it's just that character is just oh, Mr. Just wild tilting. triggers. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. It, the be one of the best parts about this kit, and Sentinel Prime has this going on too, is the two power restraint cables superpower. This is this is web snare. This is web line mm -hmm. pull. Mm -hmm. uh, choose an enemy character within four and in line of sight. If the chosen character is pushed towards this character, short. Uh, you can only use this once per turn. That's such a one of the best superpowers in the game, in my opinion. Um, it's so good on Venom, so good on Gwen. Um, and the fact that you're going to have potentially three of these bad boys with restraint cables on the field at the same time, that is a, that is a control team right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I honestly, before we get into the rest, I just want to say, I feel like Sentinels as an affiliation is, is like a, one of the few, like almost, they look like a pure control, like tall team, which is weird. Like I, Thanos Black Order has a little bit of this going on, but you still like rely on Corvus killing everything at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Mm -hmm. um, this feels like it's going to be a tall control team just based on the amount of times you can throw out restraint cables. Um, Master Mold, uh, you get basically you get to take two of these. So that, hence what we were talking about earlier. Uh, and then Power Matrix at the end of this character's activation, it gains two power. That's kind of weird. Um, I think this is the first time we've seen anything like this. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's it's nice that you're going to be going into the next turn with power. Uh, yeah. They don't have any reactive abilities whatsoever, so you're not... I mean, you, presumably you could take team tactics cards that can really benefit from this. Like, imagine having escort to safety with your Sentinels. Mm -hmm. yep. That could be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sentinel programming. Uh, this character cannot be advanced or pushed by mystic attacks or superpowers, and when you're defending against mystic attacks, this character counts blank results in the defense roll as two successes. So... Hard to kill them with mystic attacks. They are robots after all. Um, I I like the healthy side. My problem with this character is the 
the injured side. Oh, and also they have flight and immunity to bleed and poison. But yeah. Uh, the injured side, so there's one less health. Uh, same defense otherwise. But I hate, I hate what the builder becomes on this sentinel. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah, I'll let you. I mean, it's, I like it from a, from like a fluff perspective. Yeah. But this, man, I think this sucks. So uh, it's, it becomes range two, first of all, which sucks. Um, it's still four dice. You can no longer like spend extra to get more dice. Instead, they get the war machine treatment where whenever you roll a crit, you roll two dice for it, but then you suffer damage for each crit that you rolled. So you're killing yourself. And in the, the cherry on top is you don't even get power from this attack anymore. <laughs> it's not even a builder. So you don't have a power generation thing other than your power matrix, which on your injured side is damaged. You only get one power at the end of your activation which won't matter because you're going to be dead by the end of your own activation for using that <laughs> stupid builder. Uh, suppression protocol stays the same. I think everything else stays the same. Yeah. Um, I don't love the basic Sentinel Mark IV. I mean, I, I love it from a... It looks fun, but the injured side is just brutal, man. Uh, so so a couple of things. I, I got to... Well, do we want to talk about Prime before we... I, yeah, let's talk about Prime. Honestly, I think Prime is the real star here, even yeah, for a five I, threat. Um, I, th I think it wraps in uh, my my whole steel spiel about Sentinel. So I'll talk about Prime. You, you want me to? Or do you, you should talk about Prime? It sounds yeah. like because you you've got stuff to I'm, say. Obviously, I'm I, yeah. I'm just I'm just kind of chomping at the bit here because uh, I really I think there's some really interesting stuff that you could do with the sentinels uh so yeah sentinel prime mark four uh the only thing that that bothers me about his card is it's the same art as the it's not the same yeah. actually his oh, mouth is open slightly oh shit. Is his and mouth the, the open? normal one's is mouth really? is closed oh yes, yes. yes you're right oh my goodness uh look <laughs> i i i'm wrong internet shame me um so yeah so defensive defensively uh he's a three four four just the same as the uh, normal mark, uh, mark force. Uh, instead of seven health, yes, ten health. Cool. Uh, which is huge. Um, he is a five cost, as Shane said. Uh, size five, moves small, um, and then everything else uh, is is just amazing. So plasma blast, mark two, um, range three, five dice. Everything else the same as plasma uh, blast as the normal sentinel. So. Uh, it's a gainer. You'll gain uh, power equal to damage dealt, and you can spend up to three uh, to add that many dice, uh, which is great. So it's just an abyss. It's plasma blast with an additional die. Yep. Uh, suppression protocols mark two is literally the same thing as the normal sentinels, except it costs one more for an additional die. It still has the wild trigger of suppression. So instead of rolling eight dice, you're going to be roll rolling nine dice for four power. Can I just say, I think that's the only thing about the Mark IV I like more. I think I'd rather have the yeah. three power eight dice version than the four power nine dice version. That's it, though. That's fair. That's fair. I'm going to go back to the, the leadership. Um, sure. I'll go back. I'll go back to that. Um, restraint cables. Um, the restraint cables are very, very good. Um, they're not as good as, as all of the other poles in the game. Um, and the, the keys in some of the wording is it requires line of sight. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Venom does not. Venom does not. Uh, Spider Man does not. Um, you know, I think Gwen does. I think Gwen does. Cat, so it's whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, so that hurts a little bit. Um, but the unless there's really a terrain feature in, in your way, um, the Sentinels shouldn't have too much of a problem. They can see everywhere over everything. They're size five. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're size five. So um, it's. <laughs> There, there is some really neat stuff that you can do with that, um, and and we'll get back to it. the other um, amazing thing is Sentinel Prime does have a reactive superpower called Pattern Analysis. Oh, so good! Um, while this character or an ally character is within range four of his yeah. huge base, yeah. uh, uh, and is attacking or defending during the modified dice step, you can spend up to three power. Uh, for each power spent, you can re-roll one die. Hey, you know Shuri has this ability? You know how amazing Shuri is? Yeah. Now, hear me out. Here's a character that can deal damage, is on a bigger base, and does the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so yes, that's going to be absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, power matrix, the same as the uh, other sentinels at the end of this uh, activation. And, and that's going to be key for pattern analysis. Right? Oh, at the yeah. end of its activation, it's going to gain two power. So you can really re-roll your own dice with some uh, assurance that you're going to get at least two power back. And I think that's going to be super strong. Uh, Sentinel programming, just as the same. Uh, you can't be pushed uh, or advanced by mystical attacks or superpowers. Um, while defending against mystical attacks, this character counts wilds in the results as as two successes. Ah, oh, just chef's kiss. Ah, oh, love it. Um, flight, immunity to bleed and poison. Um, on its backside, it goes down uh, from 10 health to 8 health. Um, and we actually don't see, so it's Plasma Blast and it's Suppression Protocol actually stay the same, which is... Thank, uh, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, that's one of my favorite uh, parts. I was I was gonna say is probably why why Shane you know loves loves the Sentinel uh, Prime. Um, I I do really like Sentinel Prime as well. I think it's gonna um, he's gonna be your consistent um, your consistent threat um, mm -hmm. on on the table. Uh, restraint cables pattern analysis stays the same, um, and so does Sentinel programming as well as flight immunity to bleed and poison. He does have um, some really uh, Another neat super uh, superpower passive call, uh, called Overloading Power Core. Those power cores are really, they're just really, uh, you know, they're not safe. You know, they, they, they <laughs> clearly speed not. Through, you know, uh, they didn't go through all the checklists. So during the power phase, roll five dice for each uh, crit and hit you roll, you gain one power. If you roll a skull, at least one skull, you take a damage. So at least it's only one, right? Yeah, you can't accidentally nuke yourself down. He's got eight uh, health, so... He does have eight <laughs> health. Now, I did skip the leadership ability, and, and, and I did that intentionally because I want you to be jazzed up about this Sentinel Prime. I love Sentinel Prime. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm, I think he's splash-worthy. Splash down! I agree. I totally agree. In so many affiliations, I actually think Brotherhood, um, I think he's a contender for one of those coveted five spots. I've got some shenanigans um, that I've been thinking about in Sentinel Prime. Um, so I think Sentinel Prime, just just as he is, not as a leader, is 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 great. Um, but let's talk about his leadership ability. Mutant, mutant Hunters, um, when an enemy character is dazed, after the effect is, is resolved, choose a number of allied characters up to the dazed character's threat value. Each chosen character gains one power. You cannot gain more than one power as a result of this leadership ability each turn. So a couple th a couple nuanced things. Um, the first part is it only triggers on dazes. Which is so weird. It, it is, <laughs> and it's it's weird, and it's going to be frustrating because you... You're gonna want if you daze a character, you're you're gonna want to KO them, mm -hmm. um, and so you're not gaining the benefit from finishing models off, uh, which is gonna be kind of annoying. Um, but the interesting thing is, um, the trigger also states when an enemy character is dazed. So there are actually some interesting effects that can happen that will self daze a trigger that will daze during the you know, a weird timing step, um, you know, in, in a round, and you can still gain the benefit of this ability, um, mm -hmm. which, which is really neat. One of the funny things that Shane has, has been doing to me and to several opponents this season uh, is dazing people during their turn uh, as Spider-Foe's <laughs> shenanigans. Mm. Uh, guess what? Uh, if that was happening during, uh, you know, if Goblin was, was hanging out with uh, the Sentinels, all of a sudden you tricks and traps and you daze them during their turn um, because they've moved or have caused some other self dazing effect. Um, congratulations. You get the power. Uh, it's really cool. So there's some neat things. Uh, Red Skull, Clea, a couple other characters uh, can do a superpower and damage themselves and actually daze themselves. So you <laughs> and uh, cubes, you could get dazed by a cube and gain the power for that. Yep. Yeah. Cubes. It's like getting another um, power phase if something dies to a cube. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is although just, actually maybe not because it's turn. Uh, okay, so maybe that doesn't work. I'm ninety percent sure that it it uh, it, it will. Um, 
it, th those are some of the questions that are in the FAQ queue right now. Yeah. Um, is those weird timing results of um, if it's going to be consistent with some other things, um, you normally wouldn't gain the benefit of this, but I'm of the belief along with some other uh, folks um, that the way that this is worded, you should gain the benefit of this leadership. If you days in the power, um, the power phase. So uh, yeah. So I love the Sentinels. I think they're going to be really cool. Um, I actually super, super duper love the, the Sentinel Mark fours normal um, seven health with a three, four, four defense and hear me out are consistently in the range four bubble of Sentinel Prime is going to be a lot harder to chew through, chew through than people think. I think they're going to do well with Sentinel Prime for sure. I don't yeah. think you're going to see the regular Mark IV splashed anywhere. Mm -mm. I don't think so either. Yeah. And, and I think part of why I don't love the Sentinel Mark IV is because I, you know, you look at their card right next to Prime and it's kind of jarring how, like, even for the, considering the fact he's a higher threat, mm -hmm. he is so much better. Yeah. He has like five more total health. Um, offensively, he's way better. He he doesn't have almost any of the downsides that the Mark IVs get. He's going to be yeah. an awesome five threat splash, I think, in a lot of affiliations. And I think what's going to be really dependent on the success of you know if someone if you're if you're a listener who says I want to I want to rock robots and just slap them every game. Um, you, you one of the things that you need to do is you need to win the priority role every single time <laughs> and you need and you need to play c or e maps um i i think they're really really gonna struggle if they're forced to spread spread out um you know if, if you've got a one sentinel and then you have to split up the Sentinel Prime and then the other Sentinel. Now, this is also foregoing. We don't know about splashes yet. You know, I mean, I think there's some. Cassandra Nova is going to be amazing with them. My faith. Um, uh, and it, it's just going to be some utter shenanigans because she can manipulate some. Uh, it's just gonna uh, the amount fun. of control you're going to have if you're able to take all four. Yeah, I mean, so we just talked about how amazing Wakanda is in Gamma. Hear me out. Now you're just robot Wakanda. Um, oh my god, you're right. And on Gamma, and it's just going to be amazing. Hey, playing demons downtown. Oh, you want to stay out of out of range of being incinerated? Oops, I just restrain <laughs> uh, restraint cable you into that. And um, unless you're uh, Malekith or those folks who who have you know um, auto throws, um, you're going to be really sad because it's going to be hard to push. Uh, it's going to be hard to push advance and throw these big guys now when you do it's going to hurt really bad because auto six damage um is, is going to be terrifying yeah. malekith uh, malekith is going to eat these guys alive yeah um it's going to be a, a a bad time when with bad kitty comes and throws a sentinel into another sentinel um but um just I take brace no. you know just to take brace for impact <laughs> i mean yeah, you, yeah you're not wrong and that's and you can do that you know, unashamed knowing that you're going to at least gain, you know, one power out of it too. So, uh, um, you know, because at the end of your activation, you gain two. So you've effectively, you know, paid the cost of, of the brace. So yeah, I, the first thing I'm going to look at when, if I, if I make a Sentinel team is, is try to look at some of the, first of all, we don't know what their tactics cards are going to be. That's so, I mean, there's a lot left to be learned about the power level of these guys, but, um, I'm going to be looking a lot at those at those really good reactive superpowers or no, superpowers or team tactics cards because um, you know being able to to move and then gain this power is nice if you're Sentinel Prime because you have that reactive um, the reactive ability for the rerolls but for the regular you know the Mark IVs they don't have any reactive powers. So that I think the best way to get mileage out of these guys gaining that power at the end of their activation is, uh, is, is kind of setting up, you know, like I said earlier, having a, um, an escort to safety, maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think that could be awesome with these guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to do a little bit more, uh, you know, theory crafting and cheesing to figure out what kind of stuff is, 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 cool and good with the uh with the sentinels 
but there's a lot of cool reactive superpowers in this game like fallback for instance is another one yep um I, I, go ahead oops no hear me out you know what small moving big bases really really love what's that uh is a interdimensional interdimensional bloodhound ah uh, lockjaw uh who who says move range three on turn one and you've got a range three attack so now your threat range is huge right yeah. um so there there's some play right now your your pretty poo poo four dice attack is now five dice with interdimensional bloodhound uh, you know stuff like that is is gonna be great. I actually do think that sentinel prime um for your next roster, your next foes roster is a, a sweet splash for you, Shane. Um, Could be. You know, it, it gives you gives you that control uh, that you want. Uh, and also, hear me out, um, it gives you dice consistency. It's Robot Shuri. Uh, I, I won't lie. I mean, it's it's definitely on my radar. I don't yeah. want to say it's on the list yet. But, you know, There's still a bit to learn about these with the Team Tactics cards. And definitely. I got to put them on the table and try them. But uh, no, I mean, with, with Juggernaut leaving my list, because that, that is something that's happening, um, and Ronan leaving my list, I've got some open, you know, we're doing tryouts right now. And uh, <laughs> Sentinel Prime has arrived for tryouts. I'm not going to say he's making the team, but... Oh my goodness. Uh, Hang on a second he's, he's, here. You're, you're saying that you're waving? You're, you're putting... You're waving put, put Juggernaut? <laughs> Put, yes, put I am on the practice squad. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't love. Yeah, at least sign him to the practice squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of reasons I'm, I'm putting Juggernaut. First of all, I don't think that um, it, I, Juggernaut's an amazing character. I've made this known to you guys. I think Juggernaut is is a top five character in the game for sure. Um, I, I just don't see a lot of matchups in the current makeup of my my foes roster where i am taking him a lot i mean i say that i did take him in cuts against matt alex which we'll talk about later mm -hmm. and, and he was a, he was great there he, he was an absolute all-star um, i think there's other characters that i that i think would synergize a little bit better with my team that can fulfill that role a little bit okay um and i, and I think sentinel prime is a contender for that uh, and, and like you said, he, he's not just this big beefy guy running around punching things. He is he's offering some support as well, while while kind of having that same essence of like you can't move me. I, I'm I'm hard to displace. First of all, he's size five. He can't be moved. He's basically got the juggernaut helmet ability, mm -hmm. yep. uh, but he gets it on his injured side too. Um, and he's size five, so you know normally the thing is juggernaut. It's like well you, you're allowed to throw him. Some things can throw size four. Nothing throws size five except for you know a hand you know one or two things in the game. Yep. Um, Malekith. Uh, um, uh, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I I I am kind of trying to find. I, I don't know for sure that uh, that that Sentinel Prime is going to make my roster, but I'm definitely going to have to uh, to do some some games with it just to, just to see how I feel. I love it. And you said you might put him in your brotherhood. I I um. He is same same as he is invited to the tryouts. Um, Fair. I am. There are a couple of potential. Now this also depends on how amazing um, uh, Pyro and Blob are going to be. Um, I've been joyfully anticipating them, and that's another another time for another day. But um, I I love the the potential fluff. I, I'm going to be painting my Sentinel Prime most likely. Uh, the days of future past sentinels uh, mm -hmm. where Magneto takes them over with some metal. I'm going to see if I can uh, green stuff, some metal coming out of them. So <laughs> it looks like, looks like Magneto is controlling them. I just, you know, uh, if, if our listeners don't know this, I love Magneto. Magneto is the best boy. And, I think they picked up on that. Uh, you know, I have a shirt. <laughs> I have a shirt that says Magneto is right. Uh, so if it's on a shirt, it's gotta be correct. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things. Um, I think Sentinel Prime um, really can help a lot of teams with some dice consistency. Like you said, um, besides a very few amount of characters in the game, moving a size five uh, character is that's what Dormammu loves, right? So now Dormammu's got some comp competition. Um, you know, uh, and heck, uh, how 
I didn't even think about this till just now, but what about Dormammu and some Sentinels? That's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> the biggest boys. It was the big team thick, right? So it's just the running in stars. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's the monster. Oh my god, yeah, because uh, oh no, man, if only Dormammu is threat seven, you could have all four. That would have... <laughs> at twenty. If we ever get a twenty-one threat crisis, I love it. That's the that's the fun team to bring. Four that's size, the, five guys. That's the dream. I guess now, I mean, we are coming up on an hour here, so I don't know how quickly we want to run through this, guys. But uh, Shane, Shane, you made top eight with spider foes. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, you're leaving out the, the bad part, though, where I didn't make top four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but... Yeah, unfortunate. But I mean, still, it was a, it was a crazy run with a uh, an underrepresented faction. So that's uh, that's some serious skill and uh, grit. Uh, that was required on your part, and it was a very impressive showing. So, congratulations! Oh, thank you. I mean, it, it was, it really was. I mean, I told Ben before the season my my goal was to go three and three. Yeah, that, that I would have been satisfied with that. Once I got my third win, and I was three and one. I was like, yeah, pressure's off. Um, and then I just won a bunch more games after that. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I ended up going seven and two uh, in total. And I'm really happy with that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. well beyond what I could have possibly expected. I guess we can just get started talking about your run here. Um, I kind of want to start off just asking you questions, really, just to kind of paint a picture for the listeners here as to how that run went. Uh, so let's start off here with um, what made you choose Spider Foes going into this tournament? It was purely flavor. This was my first league. Um, and right off the bat, I just when I got into MCP, I was like, I want to play foes. And they just seem like the coolest thing to me. And I, I'm going to. So so when I started playing uh, a lot of games, I was only playing foes mm -hmm. because I just wanted to keep it simple for myself. And then season eight started rolling around and I was like, well, I've only played foes, so I might as well take them to season eight because if I at this rate, I, I don't have time to learn something else. I played a a bunch of games with this team. Um, and to be clear at this point, like I wasn't really having a ton of success. Like I was doing okay. I, I, my win rate with foes was pretty like 50, 50 at this point. Um, and I just wanted to do okay. And take, cause I know I had no um, delusions about how good the faction, uh, the affiliation is. And uh, I, I said, you know, I'd like to go 50, 50 win loss because I, I presume the faction is probably going to have less that less than that as their as their total win rate which i believe they ended up with like 43 44 percent this season that sounds right um so I, I i put my roster together i was prepping pretty hard to try to do the best i could and yeah i stuck to my guns with foes and i also i've always i mean ryan you know this about me i i like to i don't like to play meta things i like to find things that are good yeah um and i was hoping i could find some magic with foes so you didn't uh take this faction like knowing hey i think spider foes are a good like counter meta pick in the no. in the current state at that time of the game not at all um i i just after, thought they were cool after your tournament run do you think that spider foes are a a potential meta like counter pick you know, if Malekith didn't come out, I would actually say yes. I actually really did not have a problem. Once I, because the first three weeks of the league, my my list and my play style was very different than, than what it has become. It was a lot more like pseudo criminal syndicate kingpin style where it wasn't very attrition heavy. It was like, just take a lot of throws and take a lot of beefy characters and sit on secures. And um, I would, I would use well-laid plans to like play anti control uh, or like anti, like, you know, like if I'm playing on an F shape or something like an F shape extract, I would, I would use that for anti control. And, and yeah, the idea was beefy characters are harder to kill. So, and it's, it was kind of inherently anti attrition. But uh, playing that a lot, and I kind of like beat my head against the wall with it. It's like very subpar as a playstyle. You're playing a much worse version of Criminal Syndicate. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and it was after the week three when you're able to switch your roster where I made a bunch of changes. I put Mysterio on the list. I put Cassandra Nova on the list. I took Ock out. I took out well-laid plans because I just hate that card. And I became more of a reactive, like a lot of people say trap house foes. Mm-hmm. That's like a thing that people say a lot. Um, it's not so much trap house, but it is because it, because when I'm using traps and stuff, it's not really for the damage. Uh, it's mostly for the moves that I'm get that I'm getting uh, after that mm-hmm. attack goes off. Um, and and getting that extra action economy is huge, especially for a character like Mysterio, who's kind of slow, or Nova, who has all these bubbles. Like not only does she have that bubble, but she's got stealth and she's got like uh, the range three mind possession, and she can hit you outside of her stealth with like her builder. Um, and it became this really reactive out of activation play style that is way better. And it has a lot of mystic attack. So it was really good against the big scary villain before Malekith came out, which was Shadowland Daredevil. Um, and I went from losing to that a ton of times in a row to, I haven't lost to it in a long time with my foes. Um, and it still has a lot of control with Venom and, and, and Nova and, and stuff. So I can, I can play against teams like, like, like Ben, like I can play against Brotherhood. Um, I can, yeah. I can, I have ways to move the characters away, like shift Magneto around. Um, but I think my list just simply was not equipped for Malekith. Um, and that's one of the things I'm, I'm kind of targeting right now with my, uh, with my roster changes after the season is how am I going to deal with Malekith and, and I, I'm not too much worried about Hulk. I think I actually am okay against Hulk in my roster already. It's just. It's Malekith. Malekith is a huge problem for me. And mm-hmm. I, maybe that's just a Malekith thing and it's not so much a foes thing, but clearly there are a couple teams that have some game into Malekith. Foes, as I run them, as anybody runs them, to be honest, uh, does not really have game against Malekith. And I need to look for that in my splashes. All right. So um, how did you go about preparing for this tournament? Playing a lot of games. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> Playing, it. Honestly, uh, Ben and I prepped a ton. Uh-huh. Um, we were, we were doing practice games and and like for a while it was like, then you would run my opponent's list against me. Yeah. And, um, that was super helpful. Uh, if you have like a, if you're whoever's listening, if you, if you are playing in the league next season and have a practice partner and like help each other out, because that is so useful. And Ryan, you and I used to do this for, for some kill team. team, Yeah. And it is so like insightful yeah like, kind of seeing how the list because you can read the roster and be like oh yeah they it does this and that and like this is what he's going for but it's another thing to see it on the board yeah um and you might not know exactly what they're gonna do but think of the scariest look at like when you look at the roster what i would do is i would try to think of this the thing i'm the most scared of and and try to have my my practice partner play that yeah because the the best case scenario is they play exactly that. Well, actually, the best case scenario is they don't play the thing that you were most worried about, mm-hmm. <laughs> which you're already okay with, unless like they throw a total curveball. Um, and like the worst case scenario outside of the curveball is they're playing the thing you're scared against, but you've got a bunch of reps into it now, so you kind of know how to deal with it. So I think the, those practice games are are crucial. And I would not have made it this far without them. <laughs> so thank you, Ben. Do, do do I get to be like that little goblin scribe that was near the Goblin <laughs> King? Is that me? Oh, what's his? We were talking about this last week. The um, uh, Jabba's Salacious Crumb. Yeah, Salacious, Salacious Crumb. Crumb. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Jabba's Jabba's little pet gremlin. Yep. That's oh me. my goodness, that's, that's a laugh. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> All right. Uh, no. Yeah, I, you go yeah, ahead. I know that. You go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry, Ryan. Yeah, um, practice partners really um, make this game go a lot smoother. You know, uh, you know, as Shane was saying, the more reps you get into it, the less something gets scary and overwhelming and 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 tilting and and all of those things that we've talked about in the past. Um, as much as Malekith is really, really frustrating right now, um, at least for me, the more I play into it, uh, even with you know, I I play probably one of the worst affiliations going into Malekith, which which is Brotherhood. Uh, if we're gonna be honest, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm. It's an uphill battle and it's frustrating, but I can. Um, I know what I'm going up against, 
so I can kind of prepare myself a little bit more mentally for it now. Um, and yeah, so find practice partners, get more reps in, you know, if you have the time, um, it, it really makes it worthwhile. So um, out of curiosity, how many prep games were you guys doing like a week? Most of the time it was just one. Gotcha. Um, for, for the most recent thing, uh, the quarterfinals game against Lucas, I think we ran like four, but that was only be, we were only able to run four because <laughs> half of those games, it was like turn right. one was so devastating. I was like, let's just try again and re-rack. Right. I remember you telling me that now. Um, right. So that was a thing. Cool. Ben, do you have any questions for Shane? Uh, yeah. You know, Shane, what, I know we, we answered it a, a, a little bit, but um, if someone if, if someone is listening and and it really gets excited about maybe a, a Green Goblin or or maybe the Sinister Six, which is really the mass, uh, we, we, I think we've got most of them in there. I think we're missing like Rhino, Vulture, a couple of the other you know yeah. staple names here. What would you tell someone coming into wanting to play Spider Foes? What 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 would be some advice? For, for them? Uh, I would say, like, I guess it depends. Like, just, just like, beginner level or, like, if you're trying to be competitive? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I would say, for a beginner, first of all, I think, obviously, you need to buy the Goblin Box. Um, but uh, beyond that, I would recommend grabbing, like, the only one I would say, get, get all the boxes. Don't You don't need to get Kingpin, though. I, I don't think that's necessary. And the nice thing is there's only like three or four total boxes for foes, two of which are single characters, so they're like cheaper. Um, and d don't rule out any any of the affiliated characters. I mean, even I, I say don't take Kingpin, but even Kingpin, I think there's there's probably a world where you can make Kingpin work in foes. Um, but I'll, I, this is a problem that I had where coming in a lot of the a lot of the common sentiment was you know don't bother with carnage he's too swingy um don't bother with mysterio i heard that um and honestly I, even craven gets a lot of crap too i think find the characters that you like and and, and you know every character is good at something mm -hmm. for the most part unless you're playing og daredevil <laughs> and figure out what they're good at and and find ways to lean into those things because that's kind of what i did here because i love goblin i'm playing him every game um, and I, I discovered that I love Mysterio and what do those two characters have in common other than being foes affiliated? Uh, they have out of activation shenanigans. So I, I wanted to lean into that and that's kind of where I looked for my splashes. Um, if you're constructing a foes roster, uh, you need a two threat. I would recommend either toad or bullseye. Both are fine. Uh, I had bullseye at first and then I switched to toad and I am planning on keeping toad until we get affiliated to at least um, get at least one five thread in there. I didn't have one in the first half. And I think having a five thread is really, really crucial. Um, my favorite is Cassandra Nova. I, I think all those players should be running Cassandra Nova. If I'm being completely honest, I think she's just an all-star in the team. Um, uh, I don't think it's that bad to have a second five threat in foes, to be honest. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now. I've got a few contenders. Um, and then as far as your other splashes go, uh, recognize that two of your four threats, uh, outs, you know, your four threats other than Goblin are symbiotes who are really bad against certain attacks and are very matchup dependent. So try to fill in that gap, possibly. That's, that's one direction that, that you can take. Uh, I went with Ronin. I, I no longer think Ronin is the option. I don't think that's the answer. Uh, and I'm going to try and figure out that part of it as well. Um, and yeah, like, I don't know, just, just, just play the team a lot. And for Mysterio specifically, because Mysterio is, uh, sorry, everybody, Mysterio is the most fun character to play in Marvel Crisis <laughs> Protocol. I'm just going to say that, uh, you're probably, a lot of people are going to play him once or twice and be like, this guy sucks. He's lethargic and slow and he does nothing. He's wheezing out there, just trying to get into the action. Make sure you're using him on the right crisis setups. Ideally, uh, E or C shapes are, are probably best. Um, you can also get away with them on like scoundrels or something. But um, for me with Mysterio, I would play him a bunch and it was kind of like that. Like I thought he kind of sucked 
Um, but once you like figure out the play patterns for Mysterio and it kind of like unlocks, um, that character becomes so much more potent and so much more effective. And in, in the stuff that he does just goes way beyond uh, what what you expect of, of a three threat a lot of the time. So um, play Mysterio. <laughs> so uh, from the sounds of things, it sounds like uh, Cassandra Nova, Mysterio, and then Toad potentially are kind of like some of the, the core models to your roster. Were there any other ones? Yeah. Did, am I getting that right? As far as the splashes go, yeah, those are those are the splashes. Um, I Like I said, I ran every foe except for Kingpin, and I didn't run Doc, which I think is something that a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. Um, Doc is kind of like an auto-take in a lot of foes' rosters, and for me, he was an auto-take for a long time um for a couple of reasons first of all people take him because of well laid plans and second he like he's in the core box so you know and he's he's fast he's got a medium base and wall crawler he's got a he's got a good throw um i got really frustrated with well laid plans uh, and i took it off my roster which i think is probably the biggest deviation from the standard foes play style yeah i was using it a lot and really kind of banging my head against the wall trying to make it work um, but the reality is about well laid plans is there's a lot of setup. Um, first of all, it needs to be a situation where it is actually worth using it. Like I, I think if you're on spider infected or something and they have two extracts and you have three, I don't really know if I even want to force well laid plans, to be honest. Um, a lot of the time you want to use it when 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 they have three of the of the four or three of the five extracts, depending on what you're playing on. Um, if there's not a lot of extracts, yeah, I don't think you take it at all. Like if you're on Montessi or if you're on a single extract, I wouldn't bother. Um, uh, but but it needs to be the situation to use it, which is sometimes not always presented. Um, both Goblin and Ock need to have three power, and neither of them can be dazed. Uh, it's an active power, so it has to be your turn. So if you don't have Prio and you want to do it at the start of the turn, you might have to wait, mm. in which case one of them might get dazed, and then it comes back to you, and you can't do it. Um, and uh, on top of that, after all those conditions have been met, you still have to roll a bunch of dice and it can just do nothing. And I think a lot of people look at this card and understandably so, and they only see the ceiling of what it can do. They see, oh my God, you can make everybody drop all their stuff and do a bunch of damage to them. A lot of the time, that's not what happens. Um, I, I would use ballet plans a lot. And oftentimes I would try to only use it in situations where my opponent was holding three extracts. And oftentimes, two out of their three characters would drop their extract. Um, sometimes one out of the three. I don't think I would ever get all three. They would never take more than one damage. Maybe they'd take two. Um, and it was all, all this setup, and sometimes it didn't even change the, the, the game that much. And uh, I, the worst part of it for me that, that I think people overlook is it is really hard for Doc Ock to be a useful, good character on the board if he is spending power on well-laid plans. Mm-hmm. Goblin can can get away with it because he's got a great builder, and you know he, he can still be useful in some ways. He's actually giving up his trick or treat, which kind of sucks to use well-laid plans a lot of the time, unless he's loaded with power. But Doc, without power, is a very mediocre character. It's not easy for him to like if 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 all you have is zero power on Doc. You know, you throw your builder out, you hope that you get a crit and you do some damage. Um, maybe you don't roll a crit, maybe you don't do any damage, and then you know, next turn you've got two power. <laughs> but the the thing about Doc is he he loves having three power, so he can do his throw or a spender. That that's where the strength of that character comes in. And if you're using bully plans, Ock is you're probably not getting a lot of mileage out of Ock unless he's like spiking like crazy left and right. Um so I, even though I took Ock out of the roster, I think it's perfectly okay to have Ock on the roster. I just think that um, leaning on well laid plans hurt me more than it helped me. Um, so you mentioned this a little bit, but um, what extracts and what secures did you take on your roster? Uh, my extracts were uh, both the F1s, so cubes and spider infected, and hammers. Um, I am perfectly happy with all those. I don't want to change that at all. I don't think, um, I don't like single extracts of foes. I think, I don't think they play that game very well. And I hate Montessi, um, because if I see Montessi, I'm suddenly, I don't really want to take my, my symbiotes quite as much, uh, because they suddenly there's a six dice attack 
on the board that can just wipe them. Right. Um, but my secures, I took uh, scoundrels, um, uh, got intrusions, and demons downtown. Uh, intrusions and demons on demons downtown, I think, are excellent picks with foes. Uh, a lot of what you want to be doing is 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 sticking together if possible because you've you've got the Nova aura with her psychic destruction. You've got Mysterio's tricks and traps. You've got Goblin's trick or treat. So they're wondering where they're able to walk in this little tight area where the objectives are. Mm-hmm. And if you have Venom as well, it's who can I attack without Venom, you know, lethal protectoring and swinging over and, and smacking me back. So I think that's uh, the cognitive load is at its highest on, on situations like demons downtown where, um, where everybody's kind of running up the middle and, and you have all these things they have to worry about. Uh, scoundrels. Some people have told me I should take mutant madman into the scoundrels. Um, I, I get that on, on some level because mutant madman, I do have a lot of characters with four dice defense for the flip, but I also run Mysterio a lot, and I also run Cassandra Nova a lot, who have one and two physical defense, so I, I kind of shied away from that. Um, and Scoundrels, uh, well, there are some teams who are really good at Scoundrels, like Web Warriors and, and Kingpin Criminal Syndicate. Um, I don't think foes are bad at it either. Uh, your leadership reroll, the defense reroll, happens after cover, so you can actually make the cover from the Scoundrel token go away. Um, so I do like that, on, uh, and, and I and I benefited from that a lot in my game against Matt Alex. Um, so I, I'm probably going to stick with scoundrels. And I also really like playing at high threats because it makes it easier for me to squeeze in Cassandra Nova. So yeah, uh, that's kind of where I sit with my, with my crises right now. Um, what were the, we're not going to go through all of them, but what were the, like the key tactics cards that you had selected for your roster? And then after this, you know, after your tournament run, are there any, you, are there any, you, Jeez, I can't talk. Are there any you wished you had chosen instead? Oh, that for sure. As soon as cut happened, there was a couple of cards I wish I took that I didn't. Um, for starters, I wish I took recalibration matrix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish I found I, I wasn't a, like I I tuned into that a little, a little late. Um, Nashcon happened. I think like the weekend after <laughs> the cuts roster cut came in, and a lot of the really good players were already uh online for that one uh i was not aware of that um and uh so so i didn't take it um beyond that i uh there there was certain car i i wanted to take smash with my foes really bad and i'm still messing with that i think it's okay on on goblin um setting up turn two smashing a car and getting two seven dice builders i think can can be a nice nice way to swing an early lead um, but generally speaking, um, I, I was kind of happy with my tactics cards. I, I had sacrifice instead of, uh, um, patch up. And I think I was actually okay with sacrifice. Although with, with follow me getting restricted, I'm going to be taking sacrifice off, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But, um, gotcha. I mean, you have Venom's lethal protector. So yeah. like, do you think that's like running those two in the same, like spider foes roster? Do you think that's doing too much? Or... against Malekith, I didn't mind it because I, I liked being able to disrupt mul- multiple of his attacks. But Ben, yeah, y- you know this. Every time I ran them together, I, one of them wouldn't wouldn't get played. So yep. it's yep. I, with gotcha. all that practice, I, I think uh, I learned that maybe I don't need them both. OK, um, even though I love the theory behind it, but uh, I just never, ever got the chance to play them both. So clearly that's telling yeah. me something <laughs> it was purely a selfish question because i was thinking the same thing because i I'm, I'm planning on running venom in this upcoming tournament yeah yeah so. oh our, jots down notes yeah mm. yeah yep. <laughs> tell, mm, yes. tell me more tell me more yeah. oh, oh and one more that i actually think i'm going to be running uh like permanently um is no matter the cost ah. so i really want to use this for cassandra nova um one of the things I've been, one of the problems I've been running into with Cassandra Nova with her with her play patterns, is I will walk up on turn one and I will do a mind possession, and you know walk somebody somewhere dangerous, or walk them away from me, um, and then what happens is turn two Nova has one power because she just spent a power to to get the mind possession off, so she's back to one power. Right. And then if I don't have Pryo or something, or you know I don't immediately go with her, 
she's in danger of, of having somebody run up to her and hit her because she doesn't have the power to use her tricks and traps or psychic distraction, whatever. Um, but if you use no matter the cost, you can have that turn one. Uh, it feels weird using no matter the cost for, for one power attack. But what happens is you, you take a damage, use psychic distraction without spending, uh, or I'm sorry, mental, what is it? Mind possession. Uh, yeah. use mind possession for, for free. You take a damage and then at the end of your turn, you have healing factor. So you just heal that damage back. And then turn two, you have psychic destruction online. So not only have you created space between yourself and, and the target by moving them, um, but you have allowed yourself to turn two be safe if they run up to you, relatively safe. Uh, so I, I and not to mention, even if that play doesn't come up, I think uh, you know later do, later in the game, you know maybe you have you know like a handful of power and you want to be able to use mind possession, or if you have you know. If you have one power and you want to use mind possession twice in a turn, that's also an option. Um, just a huge fan of, uh, of of no matter the cost with Nova, and I didn't even think about that until well after cuts. So I, I'm going to start using that on her. I think that's yeah. a really cool card. I guess circling back to the to the models you were taking, I guess what were the what were the three in affiliation characters that you were taking the most? Uh, mis- obviously, go- aside from Goblin. Aside from or- Goblin, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say Mysterio showed up a lot as soon as he entered my roster. Um, Venom showed up a ton. Venom's amazing. He was one of my MVPs this tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, probably Lizard. Uh, I, that That's another way I deviate is I think a lot of those players auto take Lizard in every single game. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because Lizard is phenomenal. It's one of the best three threats. Um but I, I take Lizard a lot less. A lot of the times, I, I'd rather have Mysterio if the crisis setup allows it. Um, and Carnage, I'd say, is a short, like barely behind Blizzard. Um, yeah. Carnage, the, the couple of games that I did take Carnage, he was humongous for me. Gotcha. Uh, and then I only got to take Craven once, which was a sad day. But he won. He won, and he was good. <laughs> I think one of the, the most important things about foes more so than uh, other affiliations is I think what you'll see is a correlation between the player knowing good matchups where they're there. So, so for brotherhood, um, you know, it's pretty easy for me, to, despite whatever crisis we get, um, you know, 80% of the time it's Magneto juggernaut and rogue for me. It's pretty easy, right? Uh, mm-hmm. To just slap those three models down, and and actually have a pretty good chance. Uh, it in most in most cases, um, foes really lives or dies by really understanding your matchups, right? One of the things that you know, Shane, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what we saw um, pretty early it, as you were playing more was sinister traps is really not that great. You know, yeah, sinister uh, traps might be leaving my roster too. Yeah, you know, there. Uh, and as you play a little bit higher caliber players and kind of understand, um, you know, different matchups, there are just some characters that you can sinister traps that actually prefer you to do some early damage to them, um, and and it turns them on to doing some stuff that maybe you don't actually, you know, you haven't seen before. Um, or you you know you can look at a roster and go oh wow you don't actually have a lot of mystic and energy attacks so carnage is going to go bonkers this game right yep. uh, that's what you did against your your brotherhood opponent uh, earlier in in the the league was oh my goodness there's oh, that was black order but yeah uh, yeah thank you yeah I I always do that yeah uh, your black order <laughs> op- uh, opponent you know was uh, had a lot of physical attacks coming at coming your way you're like this is this is the time to do it. So you slap down Carnage and Carnage went bonkers, you know? Yeah, that, that was the other thing I really liked uh, in the current. I mean, Ryan, you were asking me earlier about the, the current meta matchups. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that was very prevalent, especially on the East bracket, was X-Men. There was a lot of really good X-Men players uh, running around. And they had, honestly, they didn't have a great run in, in the cut, unfortunately. But um, I think X-Men went 6-0. and we, we had like Sploosh was playing X-Men. Uh, we had Twitty playing X Men, who I had to play. Uh, X Men were were kind of a menace in the East bracket, um, and I think foes have a uniquely good matchup into 
in, into X-Men, uh, being yeah. able to kind of take away their leadership and, and so, well, their, their cover aspect of their leadership in some ways. Um, and, and also just, uh, you know, there's kind of two halves to my roster and the play style. And there's the, the area control nonsense with Nova and Mysterio. <laughs> um, but, but against Twitty and, and, uh, for instance, in my round six game, I lean into the other half, which is kind of the symbiote heavy attrition play style. Um, just being able to, to play against some of these teams that have a lot of three threat models, these teams that want to go six wide. And I consider doing this against Matt Alex too, is, uh, you know, you don't always have to go the trap house list as people call it. Um, a lot of the time, you know, if, if you're up against these, if, if you're in a mashup where you expect to consistently get priority and there's not a ton of like heavy hitting energy and mystic, uh, you can take carnage and carnage is, is, is going to eat those characters alive and, and win you a game. Cause that's the upside that that character has. So I think that's pretty much all the questions I've got regarding your run, Shane. Is there anything else that you think you, we didn't cover or that you wanted to talk about before we close out this episode? Oh, man. I could talk about foes forever. He, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't really know if there's anything that we didn't touch on. Um, I, uh, I really like this team. I, I, I don't think it's like a total fluke or anything that I made top eight. Um, I was lucky not to get Malekith earlier, I suppose, because I probably would have gotten blown away by that the second i played it um but they are a really interesting team i'm so excited for the new foes release i don't know what it's going to be big my wheel. wish list big wheel big wheel top of my <laughs> wish list big wheel no but um i'd love an affiliated two threat so i so i can stop playing toad toad's amazing but who do you think just... would be rampant speculation let's Ooh. get into it who do you think the two threat would be for for the spider for... foes for me, be... Shocker. Go yeah, yeah you were going to say it, Ben. Yeah, Shocker would make the most sense to me as a two threat. He just feels like a two threat. Um, I can see him having some push shenanigans, maybe. Um, right now, I think Toad is the only two threat that can push anything that has any control. Uh, and I can see Shocker doing that. He kind of fits the bill, too. He's like one of the lower, lo- lower level foes characters. Like, um, and, and I could see... I, I've also heard some people say maybe Prowler. Um, for those of you unaware, Prowler, if you saw Into the Spider-Verse, he's, uh, he's Miles Morales' uncle uh, who turns into the bad guy. Ah. Um, he he could also be an interesting two-threat, and it would be cool to get a Miles villain in there too because that yeah. does kind of fit the bill. <laughs> yeah. I, I would actually, I know, and Shane disagree. We've, we've had this conversation. Shane will disagree with me, but I think Vulture would be a great, Two threat. Vulture uh, is it too? I don't oh, know. Oh, I'm I'm talking I'm talking green goofy suit vulture. Oh, I or, love the green goofy suit. I hope it's know, not like some machine thing like you know, like in uh, Homecoming. He, he's he is normally not you know a big threat to Spider Man. You know, um, you know he he does some shenanigans, but that I can also see. And this is this. Let's let's see if I can get a good reaction out of Shane on this one. I want. Goofy looking Electro, yellow hat, goofy looking. Oh, my favorite! You know, oh, just, I love it. Where's, just, that, where's I want... that stupid picture of the? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you know the, the meme I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you know, my favorite. I love uh, that so much. I can see that version of Electro being two. As you don't well. like Blue Men Group, me Electro? And, me and the boys. Me and the Jamie boys. Fox I... Blue Men Group. So I think that one. I think when Electro actually becomes. Um, you know, elect in an electric being. Um, I actually think that that would be a very interesting in affiliation five threat. It could work. I, yeah, um, I also want to see Sandman. I, I, we Sandman is is what everybody says for a five threat. I could see it. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like Sandman. I was talking about this with somebody. I feel like his threat or his like power level in the comics and across the media of Marvel. I feel like it varies wildly depending on what story you're reading. Sometimes yes. it's like, how does anybody beat this guy? Yeah. And other times it's like, oh, Spider-Man beat Sandman. And then you're like, wait. But in that other story, he couldn't. He just There's just no way. He's just invincible, right? So it depends on what kind of Sandman we get, I guess. Uh, you know, if, I've seen Spider-Man beat him with water. Just like throw some water at him. Like, <laughs> um, and then also Rhino. I can see we, us getting like a Juggernaut Jr., 
like three or four threat rhino. Oh yeah, totally. Um, there's a lot of foes. I'd lo- I'd love to see a second leader. I don't know who that would be. I mean, that's we've heard a lot of things. Like maybe we get a tactic card and like Doc can be a leader. Um, I don't think they'll release another Doc because they already did the rival panel. And yeah, I Bob. don't imagine another. We don't need a third Doc. Hawk. <laughs> there's three Spider Mans. So that's give true. me yeah, a that's so give true. me. Give me a third Doc Ock. <laughs> uh, and, you know, speaking of Doc, if they did Doc Ock again, there's only one way I think they could get away with it. And that's if they were doing the superior Spider-Man where the story where Doc Ock takes over Spider-Man's body. And they, that was like a whole run that lasted for like a while. Um, That would be the coolest foe. I don't even know if you could make him a foe, really, because he's kind of not a foe. But he also is Doc Ock. That could be a five threat. I mean, yeah, he is the I, superior I, I, Spider-Man. And we've already got five threat amazing Spider-Man. Maybe he needs to be a six. Why not seven threat? Why not eight? Why not? <laughs> why not? Why not nine? Give us our first nine. All those numbers are superior to five. They <laughs> Math does say that they are higher than nine. <laughs> All right, cool. So I think that's going to wrap up this episode of the Crisis Point Podcast. Thank you guys so much out there for listening and tuning in on YouTube. Uh, if you got any feedback for us or you know there's any topics that you want us to uh, cover on the podcast here, you can leave those in the YouTube comments down below. Um, if you're listening on Apple or uh, excuse me, Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, make sure that you follow us and leave a rating. Uh, that really helps grow the podcast. Um, and then, yeah, same thing with the YouTube pretty much. Just like, comment, subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all of our latest episodes. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in, and we will see you all again in the next one. And play Mysterio.